That's what TAs are for, right? Have to start recording. <laughs> Looks like for some reason, what's that? <laughs> um, so three and a half inch. It looks like that was three and five eighths for whatever reason. Although the four and seven eighths. Oh, that is right. Sorry, don't change that. Did my math wrong? Not five eighths. Is that all right, Alex? Is that all right? Got it now? Kind of. I'm having a little bit of trouble, like, detailing the walls. What was that structural thickness B1? So for B1, it should just be 3 and 5 eighths. Uh, 5 eighths plus 5 eighths plus 5 eighths, you get 7 eighths total. And then the overall for B2 right here is seven and a quarter. So you're taking two five-eighths inch pieces of jip and subtracting it from that dimension to get the fact that the stud is six inches in total depth. I think the other key thing to be aware of when you go to do those one-sided pieces on the, um, on the elevator shaft, so let's look at one of those. What, was, what are the ones we're using? D1. D1. So over here at D1, D1 has a total thickness of 4 and 5 eighths, which is a little bit thinner. Ah. 4 and 5 eighths, it looks like we've got a 1 inch, or that's a 2 inch, metal ceiling with 2 inch, oh no, that's the ceiling, it's a one inch so above. 1 inch shaft liner. Where's that spec at? There it is. With chipboard each side within half inch of metal deck. I guess it's spec in the height that it goes up the wall. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, because you can see here it stops short of the ceiling. But then with the with D one and D four, does it only have one layer of the chipboard because of that? Leader line that comes down in between the first and second layer. Yep. So we've got half inch jip here instead of, oh no, it's within, five it's five eighths. And we got one inch liner here, so that must be a three inch metal stud then, right? It's a four inch. That makes no sense. It's got to be three. Where do you see the four inch spec? Down to one. So it's on a four inch CH stud. That's for D5 and 6, yeah, where it gets wider. Mm. So for D1, it's got this shaft wall UL design, right? Mm. Specification that goes with it. So it's a whole system that comes off. Um, so I'm going to edit B1, duplicate, call this D1. 5 eighths inch jip on 3 inch metal stud with shaft liner. I'm going to say 1 inch shaft liner. And then we go in to actually edit things. We want to keep the jip on the exterior side of the wall, right? We've got our structure here. We want to change the metal stud layer down to a 3 inch metal stud. And then out here, we're going to change this jip wall board from a finish layer. Let's call it a membrane layer, just to call, bring it out of the finishes. And then I'm going to hit the little dot, dot, dot by the jip board. And uh, what do you think we should use here? You know, shaft liner material. Deck proofing. Damp proofing. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. We use damp, damp.
damp proofing. Oof, that's hard to say. <laughs> and that's one inch thick. Membrane layer function requires zero thickness. Ah, that's right. I think we got to leave it unfinished then. Membrane layers don't get drawn because they tend to be really thin. So, you know, you can see how thick the uh, the lines are as I'm kind of zooming in on this. So you can actually hit this thin lines button at the top, which will actually bring up the kind of thickness or show you things as a thin line. And then if you turn it over to fine, you can actually see the differences in the thickness here. So if this were going around the elevator shaft, I'd actually want to hit the space bar because I can see that one inch shaft liner actually wants to be towards the elevator side of things, right? So uh, you'll want to do two things in order to be able to see that. Hit thin lines, which is up here at the top, and then down here at the bottom, change things over to the fine layer of detail to be able to see the difference between the jipboard side of the wall and the shaft liner side. Let me hear those clicking. Let me hear those mouses click. <laughs> what else? E1? Where's E1 at? What page is the plan actually on? 14? I did the E1, but it's not on the list on Moodle for the ones of us to do. Yeah, I think I skipped it because of that. Say again where it's at, Robert. Right the leftmost elevator. Uh, there's a double wall there. It's the fire. Yeah. That's probably actually specced in the structural. No, it's on the same sheet as the other doors. Is it? Right beside the D's. Um, but yeah, it says C plan for dimension, but then it's. Um, yeah, it's not really huh. I see what you mean. It's just a double thick two hour wall. It doesn't, uh, the thing I was confused on is that gap in between the two. Yeah. Yeah, you just make it a thermal air barrier. But so I couldn't figure out what the dimension of that was. Yeah, it's going to be a subtraction based on the thickness. And the thickness is not specced. Well, is it triangle one, that blow up triangle one drawing? That's going to show you the dimension there? Yeah, it might be. be some other wall sections. Rotated box out at column. That's kind of cool. I'll have to use that later. Here's detail. It's there one. Looks like uh, one and an eighth total. One and an eighth. One foot eight inches. <laughs> Jesus. I should go look at it. No, literally. Basically, 
So now you got to add stuff into the structure in Revit. So if I were doing that one, I'd go to wall, edit type, hit edit, and then here under structure, I'm going to hit insert twice, change one of these to a thermal air layer. I'm going to give it the material of air. <laughs> and then I'm going to change these over to metal studs. That structure. Uh, so we're going to do some math here. If it's overall. Twenty inches. How big are the studs? Does it say? Probably, probably the three and five eighths. So three and five eighths of an inch. Copy, paste. That structure, those are both structure. Huh. Um, so how thick is the air? And it's not like a meta question. <laughs> what do we got? We got four and a quarter twice is eight and a half. So, 11 and a half inches. What do we get for a total thickness then? One, and, one foot eight inches, one and an eighth. As I like to say, one and an eighth. Can you leave that up first? Uh, yeah. On the spec on the drawing, it has double jet board layer on the outside. Mm. Which takes so we're gonna have to take out another inch and a quarter, so that'll be go down to 10 and a quarter. There'd be a way to copy these. It's half inch chip. Too. It's half inch chip. Dude, there's half. Goodness. On my side, it says Tommy. Will you guys get, get it together here? The leader points to the insulation, so that's kind of confusing. And there's another note above. <laughs> yeah, I see the half inch. Oh, that's, a, that's the within half inch. Ah, uh, so. So what is it? God, I almost had it finished. But there's two layers on each side, huh? Mm -hmm. Who's having issues? Sam, I hear no clicking. It's very quiet right here. I hear only my own mouse. <laughs> I've been clicking. <laughs> I've been clicking. I'm clicking. <laughs> Get off my back. <laughs> uh, these guys up front here are just telling me what to do. What's that? In E1, yeah. We're drawing E1. Yeah. It wasn't actually listed on the. <sighs> we were just really looking for a challenge. I'm going to change this over to two hour. So how do how do we name this one? <laughs> e one. <laughs> we're going to name this E one. Four. No, it's three and five eighths. Two. 
Have you found an F2 in the plan? No. Uh, yeah. Okay, if everybody's got this, or at least are happy to reference the video, I, I wanted to just take a chance to to open up uh, Robot and just make sure everybody sort of gets the the connection here. So you guys want to um, take a look up front here, real quick. I put for you to download. Uh, it's actually on the fifth year page. Under this Revit drop down, there's a few different things. Uh, this is the install tool. Uh, sorry, this this exchange tool that works. Let me see where this actually goes. Yeah, so this is the tool that will actually make uh, Robot and Revit talk to one another exactly the way that Jason did it. So uh, if you download this and install it, uh, it'll actually work basically exactly the way he did where he went to each of the drop downs um, to actually associate things. So just, just to draw a really simple structure again, I'm going to make a new project. and put in a couple of columns uh, sorry thank you put in a couple of columns and a beam Then I'll go to a new view, new 3D view. Oh, this is a nice one. Um, so uh, again, you got to hit VG to get to the visibility graphics override. And a couple of things that you'll want to do is to turn on your analytical model. You need to turn on your analytical nodes. And this, this seems to be something people kept missing. And then if you want to turn off the model, so that you just see the nodes, the way that Jason was working with it, that this is the this is what you're looking for. So you can turn off the, the um, you can turn off the model in that same spot with VG visibility graphics, uncheck this box and check the box on analytical model. So then he added in into the families the boundary, and you can see by default mine aren't loaded here with the new project, so uh, I'm going to go to insert and load family, boundary conditions, just select all of them, hit open, uh, what, did he, what did he do, oh I forgot, um, to get these working, crap. Yeah, I know they're in here, but um, there it is. Uh, that's right. Uh, and we just have to go and associate each of these. Okay, so I'll do that again. So here under boundary conditions is under analyze. And these are just defining the different pin connection or different types of connection at the ground plane. Um, and it's just a, it's all just kind of, there's nothing actually being modeled here aside from just defining what that connection is like. And so now we should be able to drag a fixed connection in. Nope, still coming in as a parking spot. You gotta hit boundary conditions and then you can snap it to the bottom of each of these. There we go. I love that it comes in as a parking spot if you don't get it right because 
a parking spot is a boundary condition if you think about it, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly that. It is. It just has nothing to do with what we're trying to do. Okay. I think that's funny. I don't know why come you guys can't enjoy things like that. <laughs> okay. The <laughs> um, now you'll see that like in 2014, all you have is the, so if you don't have this structural analysis link here, that means you haven't installed this link from the Moodles called uh, structural analysis and code checking toolkit 2014, right there. And here also is a Dropbox link to the 670 megabyte zip file that has all those families. If you haven't moved that over to your computer yet, in order to get the boundary conditions, there is the Dropbox link right there. I can't leave it up for much longer. It's taking up too much Dropbox. And then here's the Dynamo installer that you need for Jeremy by 2 o'clock today or I'm going to be really pissed. Okay. <laughs> Denchenka? Blake? Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, everybody got this down now? So when you actually go to make that link, I'm going to go here, here. Stop being so pushy. We want to send the model to robot. It's pretty sweet. It opens up robot. Hmm. We forgot to put a load on it. Shit. It's a problem. It's okay. Because it's a link, we can just update it and it'll bounce right back over to robot. Have a what disappear? <laughs> really? You might try opening one of the backup files. Uh oh. Doesn't like that I don't have any loads. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> No. Okay, uh, so the loads, again, under Analyze Loads, I want a hosted line load here that I'm going to host along the length of the beam. And now we'll go back again to Analyze to the same spot. And this time I'm just going to update model and it'll update it over to robot. We should see that load. Wonder if we needed to do update and let's try update model and results. Still not showing me that. Uh, uh oh. Let's just try sending it again. more. Okay. So the, the key thing here that, you know, that we were doing is going to steel design steel and aluminum design to so the main kind of navigation is in this drop down and 
in essence, it's it's all about, and I know we were screwing around with this a lot, it's all about defining what members you're actually looking at. So here you can see the verification options. It's looking at one to three. I was having the most luck by creating a new group and selecting all of my pieces. So hitting section, uh, There we go. Delete If you delete the number out of the member list, select them all and say save and OK. Now we've got them all inside of this, uh, inside of this group and we want to do the code group design. Here's the group that I made which is called group one and then I'll hit calculations. And the results are switching up the actual dimensions of each of these things to 4 by 13 and 5 by 16 uh, sizes. I can hit change all and close. It's going to actually save the results. And now we want to go back to Revit. And say update model. So now I need to go back into VG and turn on the model again. So I can see the elements have been resized to match the objects from robot. That's the oh, holy shit, that's really cool part, right? Holy shit, that's really cool, Chris. <laughs> we just resized all of those members in that whole complex frame that you've modeled. <laughs> All three of them. <laughs> you guys get it? Yeah. Okay. Now I'll go back and do it for that whole floor plate or five stories that you did. You got to put those pin connect or those uh, rigid connections all the way around on the bottom, like your foundations, and then throw it in and see what happens. It's going to be amazing. I got to go set up the lecture. <laughs>